So now we can do the uh, USB 2. That we have to do that. What about soil sample? Um, we need um, we need a higher level science center, I think, for soil samples. And we don't have that right now. So then we'll have to do all the science over again. All right, you. There we are. Um, one, two. Oh, we need. Fairing. And. I mean, we could leave it up that like satellite. That's not what we're making, though. We're making a missile. So. We don't need, need solar panels in this one. That's not what we needed for this mission at all. All we cared about is having an SAS on there. So let's get a swivel. That will get us into space. We don't have to get into orbit. The V2 number 20. Unmanned suborbital. Oh, it's got to be recovered. Right. So orbit and then down again. Which this should work. But I guess we will have um, a separatron or a um, decoupler after all. Parachute. I'll go ahead and put a couple of solar panels. Actually, I guess all the solar panels can be on this core. That's fine. The, the solar panels won't work until we pop the, uh, the um, this words, um, the the fairings. But that's all right. Where do we mount those? It's like really awkward. There it is. Okay. I think I might go ahead and just make sure we've got more than enough to get there. It's ridiculous, but there we go. I don't know what the deal with that is. Um, so what we have here is we have something with a brain that can reach space, decouple, and then land back safely. It doesn't have a heat shield. Probably want a heat shield, don't we? Probodobodyne does have a reaction. So it can steer, it'll have the solar panel stuff, then it's got the parachute. One parachute's gonna be more than enough, this is gonna be a very light thing. Heat shield, those. Uh, no real experiments. We could throw on a couple of battery packs just to be safe. Adds a little bit of weight and certainly a little bit more cost up front. Actually, why don't I go ahead and use this version of it? Fairing looks a little bit funny. There we go. Oh, I can give it... Oh, so I can tell it to be the right size and then give it, yeah, just a little extra radius just to coat that. Excellent! Should we color the top? Can we do that? No, I don't know. It's alright! What's the uh, mission called? Um, oh, it's, it should be called the Blossom-1. Or like that. I mean, I don't think the name, I don't think they care about the name. Unmanned, Kerbin, suborbital, go. Uh, put some fins on there. Maybe the Delta Deluxe. They look pretty cool. They do have some control surfaces. I mean, we got a gimbling engine, which should be fine. It just has to go suborbital and come down. That's more than enough Delta B to hit space. I think we're okay, yeah? And for the sake of it, let's go ahead and give it a uh, launch stability. 
There, right at the bottom. Boom. I think that's okay. I don't see anyone telling me there's anything catastrophically wrong with the design, so. All right. This is totally not a missile times two. This one looks proper missile-like too. Uh, SAS turn on, which this probe core can do. Full throttle. Go. Throttle back a bit. Gravity turn just a scooch. There we go. Throttle back a bit more. There we are. And we'll still probably go um, supersonic, like in relatively thick atmosphere here. Yeah, we're getting damn close. Yeah, we'll pull back a bit more. There we are. I mean, 300 meters per second. Passing that before you get to the 10,000 mark means you lose a lot of your delta V to air resistance. Gravity turns looking a lot better. Everything's feeling very stable and manageable. It helps that we have a gimbling engine on a relatively short design, plus these fins do give us some extra control. Okay, I think we're high enough we're going to be able to throttle all the way up now. We are supersonic, but the air is nice and thin. Traveling above Mach 1, I should say. Closing in on Mach 2. 45 degrees at 15 kilometers is about where I target. We are basically there. Um, and I think at this point, I'm just going to keep going up at basically 45 degrees. Oh, maybe throttle back a little bit. Because I need to make sure that we actually go above 70 before we run out of gas. Okay, that's going to happen. So now I can go and just flatten it out. Could have done it a little sooner. Flatten it out so that our re-entry is not quite as steep. And that's it for the fuel. Ooh. It's a little annoying, but all right. Get rid of the fairing. <laughs> And get rid of the bottom. Something here is not right. Something about how some of the components, I'm going to have to do that again. That is a assembly glitch. The fairing was um, was sticking through the docking or something like that. Like the fairing is still attached to my heat shield. All right, how do I get rid of this goddamn thing? There we go. You go away. Okay, the fairing. There we go. The fairing was attached to the heat shield somehow. So now I think the fairing is attached to the coupling. That's annoying. All right. You reattach. Oh, in symmetry mode, please. Well, everything about the design clearly worked, except for the fact that there's a weird, weird construction glitch. I mean, it doesn't make sense that one part was going through the other one. But that's what it was. You gotta be careful, especially with the heat shields, because of the way it bulges out, sometimes things can snap oddly. And any, any thin component, it can be, you can discover that you've attached something to something sort of through it in a way that wasn't expected, which is exactly what happened there. Okay, now it's looking better. Throw it around two thirds, still getting plenty of speed gain. Not need an antenna? Uh, no, we're not using remote tech. Uh, are you saying for the mission? No. 
No antenna required. It's just got to we got to recover the probe core intact. That's all. A little more throttle. Start the turn. Just trying to keep it within the yellow circle. One of those times I wish we had the um, the ascent module for MechJev at this point. We'll unlock it later. Uh, looks like we're right on schedule with our turn. It's not actually a gravity turn. Well, I mean, it's, it is being gravity assisted. Mostly mimicking the path of the gravity turn I would like to do with a little bit of manual loving. Speed is still increasing. At a pretty good rate. Without having any air or heat effects. I'm a little bit happier about this. We're hitting our 45 degree here. Just about the time we're crossing the 15 kilometer. Which seems to be a really nice kind of target. And then, yeah, keep drifting down. Now at this point, yeah, the time to apoapsis is continuing to climb. So we can probably pitch down a wee bit more. It's continuing to climb. So we're pushing the apoapsis a little higher and higher. Um, I'm going to throttle back a little bit more. Running a little lower on fuel, but no, we're definitely going to bring our apoapsis to where we want it. So I can go and go completely sideways at this point. Definitely want it to flip over on its own there. Still not quite as high. Okay, we're over 70, so we'll go suborbital. So yeah, we'll just keep burning sideways here just to flatten out our orbit, just to make it so we don't come back um, too steeply. These heat effects are mostly not an issue because of the height. Okay, so. Let's go backwards, which is just happening because we have no more control. I don't, maybe there might be control surfaces on this. So now, we should, there we go. That's exactly what we're looking for. Turn off the SAS. That's exactly what we're looking for. This thing is gonna get flung into space and hopefully come back safely. Uh, that's a big hope. Lots of electric charge. Interesting that we're not using any. Hmm, I can still turn. Excellent. Very weak reaction wheels here, which is why when the engine cut out and I wasn't able to use it for gimbling anymore, I sort of lost um, attitude control. It's because the reaction wheel in this was not strong enough to fight the air pressure. I got SAS turned off. Do, do, do. Oh, will I be able to get telemetry? Is that not a thing? Maybe it's remote tech that added telemetry as a science source for this. Or SETI or something. I thought it might have been D-Magic, but apparently not. It's probably remote tech. I like to be able to get science from just the probe core. Looks lovely, though, spinning over here. Doesn't it? Little shiny bits. Oh yeah, we're not losing electric charge because I got solar panels. My god, solar panels, you guys! What's up with that? Alright, quick save. Time warp. Okay, and for the sake of sanity, so what I'm going to be doing, right, is with SAS doing this and then tweaking it on the way down, it should be really easy to, uh, to, to steer. Um, especially given its size. We've got infinite power with the solar panels. For the sake of sanity, I will tell the smart ASS to just keep us going surface retrograde. Surface retrograde is our goal. That will keep the heat shield pointed directly into the air, and that way I don't have to steer it. And we can go to times four. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Quill says this is about sending with Kerbals into space, but it's obviously just a cover for ballistic missile program. You have figured me out. This should work really well. And we don't have very powerful reaction wheels, um, but we are very light, so it's the reaction wheels don't have to work very hard. A lot of power. We've got... Oh, yeah, the stage is right. I didn't put any parachutes on the bottom stages, but, yeah, that's okay. And you're going to keep coming in. Let's kill the time warp. Well, actually, a little risky, but... Let's keep time warping until I'm right down towards the surface. That way we don't have to wait for the parachute. Do do do. we got no... Oh, no, we still have that. Turn that off. Yeah, see, this is aerodynamically stable. I've got the SAS turned off, and it's staying pointed down with the shield, which is what we want. And deploy. And fully expand. 
we're gonna drop really slowly here. Oh, actually, I was expecting us to drop a lot slower than this. Probe core must be heavier than I give it credit for. Because one of these parachutes like this, plus the command module, will drop at about this speed. Huh. Still going at times four time warp. There we go. I would very much like to do a lunar flyby. We've got solar panels, and so we should be able to do that, and I think that's how we'll end the stream. Fly by and returned from the moon. That completed this mission. Excellent. Let's go ahead and recover this vessel. We got back the expensive bits. The probe core and the solar panels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in 1.05, uh, water buoyancy is a thing. And you can float, you can make boats, you can make planes land on water, people make aircraft carriers, it's very exciting. Um, but da -da -da. Next one would be the Soviet Union's R2A, which would be an unmanned suborbital that reaches at least uh, 150,000 for more money. Um, we will take it. Oh, science data from around Kerbin, that's a nice free one. We'll do that. And we've got the fly by the moon mission. So that'll be the next thing. We're going to fly by the moon and then that will wrap up our um, Kerbal stream for today. But that's going to be at least another half hour, if not another hour. So hold on to your uh, space suits. To your space pants! It'd be nice if we could do a lunar flyby with a trio of people, wouldn't it? As opposed to just one person. That would add difficulty. Lunar moth one. We're going to keep a, a bug theme. All right, Moon or Moth. Uh, so, Command Pod. Crew Cabin. Supplies just in case. We do have enough for um, 15 days, apparently. Just by themselves, in the Kerbal's pockets. But we will bring this. I don't know how much more this adds, but yes, we're going to bring some nutritional organic meal substitutes, a.k.a. NOMs. It's going to have 500 units of supplies. And room for mulch, which is the leftovers. It's all the wrapping. And or maybe poop. But we're not going to be running a greenhouse on here. So that's going to be fine. Um, I guess, you know what? I'm talking about bringing... Um, I'm talking about bringing people to... who can maybe repair and reset experiments, but we can't EVA. So how are we going to... Do we have the money for it? Just No, we don't. We can't EVA. So we could bring people for extra experience points, but there's not much point in doing it. So we won't bring the extra passengers. It's going to save a lot of weight, obviously. Sorry, guys. You'll come next time. All right. Noms. Then we are going to drop the quad core, if I can find it. It's okay. I've got a mod called Quick Search. So quad... Grab you, and while I'm looking at it, put the rechargeable battery bank. Um, I'm going to put it on top over there. That should be fine. Since we don't need power for life support as, as much like in TAC, we don't have to worry about bringing a ridiculous amount of batteries, which has been a thing in the past. So that was a mystery goo. Orbital telescope. Science Junior. Now, here's an interesting question. Do we bring these back? Now, we don't want to transmit because we won't get much science. Oh, we can't EVA, so we have to bring them back if we want the science. Okay. Uh, and I'll bring... Double this up. We don't need a second space telescope, though. So, that's one material, one goo. No, that's the telescope. Whoops. Ready the other telescope. And this is the goo? It is the goo. Clone you. Put you down here. So two goos on the bottom. Two material bays. So total of six material bays and six goos. So hopefully we're going to get high Corbin, high moon, and at least one low moon biome. Although we could really do a lot of low moon biomes. I may not want to do the high Corbin. 
because the moon ones will all be worth more. And then we've got the extra empty science bay over here. Which actually, hold on, I want to move so I can keep track of these things. No, you stay there. There you go. I'm going to put it right in front of the door so I know which one this is. And open that up. And while, you know, the thermometer is pretty small, we could easily put it on the outside. It does, you know, feel a little bit nicer if we can tuck all these things inside the bay. That's really it. The orbital telescope we've already got as a module. Um, I guess I could tuck the uh, communitron in there. Although it really doesn't have any physics, so. so let's do that. I don't know if we'll put anything else in there. I'm not sure. We did. Abonis, thank you very much for the sub. So, this is the thing that should be coming home, then. And I don't think we need anything else on the top. So, a heat shield. And lots of parachutes, because this is not going to be light. At all. Parachute there. Paro parachutes. And another pair of parachutes. Way overkill, but there's no such thing as too much overkill. I don't think we need more reaction wheels up here. That's going to be perfectly fine. All right, so now we just have to get this bad boy into space. It's not going to eat a fairing, so that's nice. We don't have to worry about weird things happening like last time. Grab our stack decoupler. And for the very first time, we're going to use the Terrier engine. This thing here is, is light. It's a third the weight of the other engines, and it's very efficient in space. Very efficient in space. That's 1,400 delta V by, it is, by itself, which should be enough to cause us to leave Kerb in orbit. This is going to be a transmuter injection stage. Should be enough to leave Kerb in orbit, get to the moon, wrap around it, and come back in some fashion. Hopefully. Do do do. Okay, we don't want to work that any more than that because it's not going to have enough delta V. Uh, I don't have the fuel things yet, right? No. So I think what we're going to do, stage one, to avoid building this too tall, I'm going to have, grab that, a 4x symmetry here, put those on the outside. What? Oh yeah, it's going to, I do have struts though, right? Good. Actually put that at the top that up there, which is good because these will force outwards. You want your decouplers to be in there at the top of these, so it knocks them away that way and they'll get pulled away by uh, aerodynamic pressures. If they knock out the bottom, they'll go like this and the aerodynamic pressure will push it into your capsule. So we do that and then grab struts. Oh, did I not grab the magnet? You're right, I didn't. Thank you. I forgot it doesn't have a module yet. We will get one. Go facing up. Okay. So stage one will be the four outer ones. Then they'll blow off and then do the next one. So we're at 4,900 delta V. That's a little tight. But we have a lot of uh, thrust to weight ratio with those fours. So we should be able to add an extra, there we go, 5,300. That should be more than enough, as long as I don't screw up any of the, as long as I don't uh, screw up the takeoff too badly and end up being too inefficient. That should be pretty good. With the amount of gimbling going on here, I don't think we need any fins. Uh, maybe on the middle layer. No, because the first layer's got 2,600 delta V. We're going to be very high by the time we eject these guys. Um, we actually are probably already going to be on a, um, like a suborbital. So I don't think we're going to need any control fins on that layer either. We don't have much in the way of reaction wheels, but we've got lots of gimbling on that first stage. I think that'll be plenty. Uh, we need to get our solar panels going. We've got the extra batteries for some just, you know, in the dark side of things, if we want to run some science. Uh, but the big thing will be solar panels right like that. It's overkill, but I'm okay with it. 
And then as a backup, I will have a single solar panel on the back side of this, in case you run out of power on re-entry or some nonsense like that. Uh, plus, solar panels tend to make pretty good radiators. Actually, let me put a pair. Won't matter for landing at night, of course, but. So this is $68,000 mission. That's pretty damn expensive. Now, a lot of the expensive bits are the parts that are coming back with us. Although these solar panels aren't, which is a little rough. You know what, instead of going that much symmetry, I think four times here is gonna be fine. We don't have that much stuff that's draining power, generally speaking. Yeah, we don't have anything continuously running the draining power. It's not like we're running TAC life support. That should be fine. Okay, heat shield, parachutes galore, an extra battery, uh, solar panels, Delta V, hopefully enough? I think that's fine. Uh, center stage won't burn out first because it doesn't light right away. It's only the outer four go first, then they they knock off and then we light the center stage. So don't worry about it. If I had, um, if I had, really what you want at this point are the, uh, the fuel pumps to pump from the outside to the inside and then you would get them all going at once and you would gain a lot more efficiency as well. We'd squeeze out a bunch of Delta V just by having access to fuel pumps, but we're not there yet. I think we're going. What do you think? Got the antenna. Can't reset science, but that's okay. We gotta need to make sure we've got a pilot here. That's very important. We only have one pilot. Check the couplers at stage one. Um. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I usually check decouplers at launch instead of here, which is annoying, because then I'll forget to do it the second time. But yeah, decouple, light, decouple, light, decouple, parachutes. As a safety feature, I'm going to split my parachutes into three different activations. That way, if something weird comes on, I can tap the first one. It'll just open this first one maybe break us a little bit before it, it breaks off, and then we can do the next two and the next two and hopefully be okay. All right, let's close these bay doors. Hal, save. Um, let's get, um, I don't know how important it is. Well, let's get the launch stability things um, like this. Solar panel capsule itself, it's got, it's got a pair on the back. So it won't catch every orientation, but it'll it'll be okay. Da, 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 da. Oh, he tweeted that chocolate video to, to Fatzer. I was saying Phaser, but apparently it's pronounced more like Fatzer. Fatzer, something like that. F-A-Z-E-R, the Finnish chocolate company. Although apparently some of the products I was eating were maybe originally Swedish, a Swedish company, but they've all like, they, they merged. Everyone's the same now. All right, SAS turn on, full throttle. Let's go to the moon, boys. Well, let's fly by the moon. 